for this video, what I want to do is show you how to construct a 95% confidence interval. So the situation that we have here is in a survey of 1,040 adults, approximately 46% of the respondents said the government should be able to access encrypted communication when investigating a crime. So with this, um, up here it just tells us to construct a 95% confidence interval. It doesn't specifically state which one, so what needs to key you off is the fact that we have a proportion here or a percentage and that this gives us our p hat. So that right there should tell you that I need to use the one proportion z interval. In order for, because of the fact that this is actually a discrete distribu distribution because we're talking about the number of adults um, and I can't have a partial adult answer a question, this is a discrete distribution. So in order for the central limit theorem to kick in and for this to be modeled by a normal distribution, what has to happen is our sample size times p hat has to be greater than or equal to five and our sample times q hat has to be greater than or equal to five. If both of these are not true, then you cannot model it with a normal distribution because the central limit theorem doesn't kick in. So with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to make sure um, that 1,040 times 0.46 is greater than or equal to five, and this does give us 478 approximately. I just rounded to the nearest whole adult, um, because of the fact that um, we're talking about people and I can't have a partial person. So even though when I plug it in my calculator, if I do the 1040 times 0.46, it gives me a decimal of 478.4. I can't have a partial person, so I go ahead and round this to the nearest whole number. Okay, um, so that's definitely true. And we have to check the n times q hat. Remember that q hat is always equal to one minus p hat. So since our p hat is 0.46, our q hat would be one minus 0.46, which would give us 0.54 is what we would plug in. So we would have 1,040 times 0.54, um, which is approximately 562. You could also do 1,040 minus 478. It would give us the same answer. Um, but it just has to be greater than or equal to five, which it is. So since both of those are met, we can go ahead and continue. If those were not met, the central limit theorem doesn't kick in and you can't continue. Okay, so the formula that we're going to use, there are different formulas depending upon the textbook that you're using. The two that I have taught from, um, one of them uses this formula where I take p hat minus e and our population proportion is going to be in between p hat minus e and p hat plus e, where e represents the um, margin of error, and the error is calculated by zc, which is just our um, z-score that corresponds to this level of confidence, um, times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. Okay, um, the other textbook that I've taught from used the formula p hat plus or minus z star, where z star is just the same thing as zc, it's just the critical value that corresponds um, to that level of confidence, or z score that corresponds to 95% confidence, um, divided by n. So basically this condenses it and shows all the work in a much smaller step. So this is the formula that I'm gonna use to show the calculations. Um, we already discussed that p hat is 0.46. I am going to use a t table to help us find our z score. And the reason that I use a t table instead of a z table is because of the fact that at the very bottom or top, depending upon your table, um, so like I said, this is a t-table. Um, so if you were looking for um, hypothesis testing, you would look for a one-tail or a two-tail test. Um, if you are looking for confidence levels, and there's many different types of t-tables, so yours may look slightly different than this, but um, you would look for your level of confidence. So in this case, we have 95% confidence. And then the very bottom row of a t-table is always your z-score. So the 1.96, there might be an infinity symbol here instead of z, 
Um, that just means that eventually what's going to happen is um, the T distribution will become the normal distribution. And so the Z score is always included at the bottom of a T table. So 1.96 is the value that I would use that corresponds to 95% confidence. And then I would plug this in as 0.46 times 0.54 over 1,040. And the best idea with this to get the most accurate answer is to plug the entire thing into your calculator. It is not a good idea to find this and then round and then multiply and then round again um, because the more you round, the less accurate your answer is. So when I plug this into my calculator, and like I said, I'm just using the TI-84 that I have, but you can plug this into any calculator this way, including your cell phone calculator. You just have to be really careful with parentheses and how you plug it in. So I'm gonna start with finding the lower limit first by doing subtraction. So I'm gonna do 0.46 minus our z-score, which is 1.96, times the square root if this opens a parenthesis here, make sure that you include the entire thing in um, underneath the radical. Um, if you're using a calculator that doesn't automatically open up a parenthesis, make sure that you open up a parenthesis around everything underneath. Okay, um, so for this one, it just lets me plug it in there. So I would put the 0.46 times 0.54 divided by our sample size of 1,040. Okay, so if I hit enter, I get 0.4297, which if you ran this in your calculator um, using the one proportion Z interval um, value, which I showed in another video, um, it will just give you an answer directly for this, but it's gonna be slightly different because of the fact that, remember how we said that n times p was approximately 40, 178? The calculator is gonna work off of 478 and it's going to keep z star to 13 floating points. So if you ran the actual one proportion z interval program in your calculator, it would give you something slightly different than hand calculations. Okay, so after you've put it into your calculator, now we need to do the plus. So for me, instead of um, instead of having to retype all of this, what I'll do is I'll hit second enter and it'll retype in exactly what I have. And then I'll just arrow over to this minus sign and change it to plus. So I can just change it to plus and then I don't have to retype everything in and I can just write down the 0.4903. as my upper uh, limit. So with these, it's always important to uh, interpret your results that you found. So in statistics, they are very, very specific about the language that you use, because remember with a confidence interval, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make an inference about the entire population of adults based on this sample. Okay, so when we are interpreting it, we always want our interpretation to be about the population that we are studying. So whether that be penguins or whether that be bears or whether it be adults, it doesn't matter. Whatever you are talking about, um, it's always the population that you're referring to in the interpretation. You should never use the word sample in your interpretation. Also remember with a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval is telling us that approximately 95% of the samples that we um, get from the population will contain the true proportion of um, that population who believe a certain way. It does not mean that you have a 95% probability that you're gonna capture it. You're either gonna capture the true proportion or you're not. Okay, so when you're interpreting this, the first thing that you wanna do is start with your level of confidence. So I'm gonna say with 95% confidence, and then we're gonna reference the population. So we're gonna say the proportion of adults And so we're talking about all adults in whatever country we're in or wherever this is. So the proportion of adults who believe the government should be able to
access encrypted communication during an investigation is between, and here you have a choice of leaving it as a decimal. You could convert it to a fraction. Um, I wouldn't, and most of the time it's either going to be converted as a decimal, or you could also put it as a percentage, which is probably the most commonly used. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert it to a percent. So I would say 42.97% and 49.03 percent. Okay, so with 95% confidence, the proportion of adults, so this is your um, whatever population of interest that you're talking about, who believe, and this is where you're going to put your context of your problem, and then you're going to end with your um, actual interval. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there's additional topics you need me to do, please let me know that as well.